The check bounced, and the house cleaner wants to know why. That's a great question. I'm Angela Brown, and this is Ask a House Cleaner. This is a show where you get to ask a house cleaning question, and I get to help you find an answer. All right, if you have a question, you can go over to askahousecleaner.com, and right there in the corner is a blue button. If you click on that blue button, you can send your message to me here at the show. Somebody called in and they asked this question. Hi, Angela. I was just wondering how to tell my boss that I don't want to work for her anymore because every time she pays me and I take her check to the bank, the bank tells me that her account is empty. I don't understand that. (laughs) This is her business. I've worked for her, supposed to get, let's say, 60 bucks, and her cleaning business account is empty. And now I got to run over to Walmart to cash it, and Walmart charges like three to six dollars to cash my little bitty check. So I feel like I'm just going to Walmart to cash my check and relying on a source that I wasn't supposed to rely on to get paid. So I don't want to be in that situation again, but if it would ever happen again, if I go back into the house cleaning business, how do I tell my boss what's up with this? (laughs) This doesn't make any sense to me. Thanks, Angelo. All right, this is a really sad situation that you find yourself in, and I kept trying to think ways around how this might have happened, that this is happening again and again. In the beginning, I thought maybe it was a QuickBooks error where they just clicked on the wrong line for the bank account and they chose a bank account that had no money in it when they meant to choose one that did. But since it's not direct deposit and they're writing you a check, it sounds like this was an error of magnificent proportions. So you ask the question, how do you tell your boss you wanna quit? You just go in and you say, hey, this is not personal, this is business, but I've noticed over the last several times I've been paid, my checks didn't clear, the banks are sending me away, and then I'm trying to run to Walmart. Walmart is cashing the checks, but they're charging me a fee, and now I'm playing bill collector to try to collect the money that I earned. It's not a good business situation for me, so I'm gonna have to go get a job that can guarantee my pay. So I have enjoyed working for you. I hope we can keep the lines of communication open, but I have to go find another job. This is my last day, see you bye. And then you have to leave, right? You have to go find a job that will pay your bills. And so it's not personal, it is business, and goodbye. All right, you ask the question, how do you prevent this from happening again? Great question. Okay, here's how this works. And most house cleaners go get a job because they need money. Okay, so the money is at the top of their mind. So when you answer an ad, the ad should say how much money you're gonna make. You're gonna make $300 a week, $600 a week, you're gonna make $20 an hour, you're gonna make $200 a job, whatever it is. There should be some kind of amount of money you can expect before you even get a job interview. Because you need to know, is this gonna pay my bills and is that the job I wanna go after? No sense going to job interviews if you don't even have any idea how much the job's gonna pay, right? When you get to the job interview, you have the right to say, hey, you said in the ad, it's this much money. What do I have to do to get that much money, okay? Ask the question, what do I have to do? How many hours is that? Or how much work do I have to put in? Because lots of times people say, oh, it's worth this much. And then you don't get paid that much. And they say, well, it was based on this, right? Clarify what that is up front. Next question is how do I get paid? Are you going to get paid via PayPal or Venmo or Cash App? Are they going to write you a check? Are they going to pay you cash at the end of the day? Are they going to direct deposit it into your account? And then the next question should be how often do I get paid? Do I get paid at the end of every day? Do I get paid once a week? Do I get paid every two weeks? How does the payroll work in your company? And then also ask the question. This is a really keen question to ask. What taxes of mine do you take out? Because what you're asking is, am I an independent contractor or am I a W-2 employee where you're gonna be taking out my FICA and my federal taxes and my social security? and all that other stuff, okay? If it's not clear, don't take the job, okay? Because what's gonna happen is you're gonna find yourself in a weird situation where they're gonna kind of give you money and it might be under the table, but at the end of the year, you have to report that on your taxes and you need to make sure they're paying taxes that match it as well, right? So that is the question and the conversation you need to have. Now, that said, after the conversation and they offer you a job, There's what's called a job agreement. And this is really important that you receive a job agreement. The job agreement is the company that's hiring you 
have their company name on file, that they are hiring you for a specified job. And in that job agreement, it should say exactly what you're expected to do. Are you expected to do deep cleans? Are you expected to do maintenance cleans? Are you expected to do special projects? Are you doing mommy's helper pa packages? Or are you doing other things? Are you kind of like running errands for the boss? Are you supposed to do your own inventory? Are you supposed to pick up other employees and use your own car? All of that stuff should be specified in the working agreement. And find out before you sign the working agreement, are you gonna be paid mileage if you're driving your own car? Are you gonna be paid car expenses? If you're driving your own car, is your personal car insurance gonna cover this? Or are you going to be added onto the company's auto policy? right? There are questions that need to be resolved before you just accept a job and then hope that for whatever reason, they're going to pay you and it's going to be accurate. You need to know what that is and they need to know what that is, right? If a company is hiring you, they need to know what they're paying you and they need to know all of the parameters around that so that that way when payday comes and you get your money and they pay you the money, they know what bank account it came out of, they know what they're paying you for, they know if they're paying you mileage, if they're paying you car insurance, or if they're paying a, a per diem of some sort. Or they need to know if they're paying for you to come do inventory, or is that just part of your job? How is that all spelled out, right? Because if you take a job and you're not clear, you're gonna find yourself in exactly the same situation because there's no standard in the industry. And so there are a lot of house cleaners that are like, hey, come help me run my business, but they don't, they're not really business people and they don't really have the answers to those questions. And so what happens then is you find yourself not wanting confrontation, but then going to the bank and then going over to Walmart and making all these weird ring around the rosies stops to try to get the pay that you've already earned. So don't do that again, because we've discovered that's wasteful. Just make sure that you have your agreements in place before you accept your next job. And that way this should never happen to you again. Alrighty, I hope that helps. And if it does, give us a thumbs up. If you want to grow your cleaning business and you want to make the most from your cleaning experience, I've left a playlist up here about boundaries and expectations so that you never find yourself on the short side of those payments. All right, until we meet again, leave the world a cleaner place than when you found it.